Okay, so in this video we're going to talk more about um, Uzi and running a MapReduce job. So, um, of course, I'm using again the IBM um, Big Insights Basic Edition, not the uh, not the Enterprise Edition, to do this. So, first of all, I um, MapReduce. Uh, a MapReduce job is really just a um, a little. Uh, um, 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 Java class or a Java application. So I created something here called m uh, word count RSC .jar. and if you were to look at the, the code for that, there's a um, little application. We can see that uh, out of note, um, I'm putting just a, a print there, um, you know, when, so we can see it system error print line. But you know, all it is, it, it sets up a job, a MapReduce job, and um, then um, it actually runs the job. Uh, you know, the map part of a job is very, you know, this is based on a word count example. So the map part of a job, all it's going to do is map all the data. And then the reduce part of a job, it's just going to count all the data, you know. So as we explained before, MapReduce, first it maps then it reduces and then there's the output and it does so over many machines so something like this you would create a uh, jar file <laughs> and uh, you would end up with something like that so you jar that up and then um, I'm gonna run this mapreduce.sh file here so um, if we look at that file all I'm doing is I'm gonna create a folder on the uh, uh, um, HDFS called word count RFC in then a copy of a dictionary file into there that's a dictionary that I have and I'm going to run the map reduce job and this is the important p uh, a code here of, of a piece here is I'm going to um, jar I'm going to run our word count RFC dot jar my main class is this word count RFC and the uh, in and out folder so uh, the in folder is where I copied the dictionary and the out folder is a folder it's going to create and then I'm going to cat or look at that. So that's how you would run a map reduce job. You write a piece of Java code, you jar it up, you uh, come over here and you execute it inside the Hadoop cluster. Now during uh, the, the courses we learned that you know it's uh, map reduce uh, you know if, if you get to this level it's very low level. I mean you're writing how to map each field not not field so much but each piece of data and and reduce it it's very very low level it, it's really suggested that you do this one level higher with something like hive or peg or, or something like that not as low as this but in any case um here i'm going to run the map reduce if if we're going to look inside our hdfs this is just some folders jobs uh and nothing serious there so um i'm going to run our map reduce uh, um, application now of course it's going to deploy the dictionary and then it's going to run our map reduce job we'll see that we got a job number and it's busy in map reduce at the moment um, if we were to um, go look at our uh, uh, HDFS over here um, there's our map reduce job running in the background our HDFS uh, sorry it's pretty slow on this virtual machine of mine. Um, we can see that my map part is now 37% done, and um, and it and it's a code that I wrote. We we can see that because of this line of output here, which is this RFC verb word count job uh, started. If we were to look at uh, my my um, over here my my uh, piece of Java code that's where that comes from so that's my job running uh, um, I, I printed something out there we can see map part is that far if we look in the HDFS there's where it copied the in folder that's where it copied the dictionary to and this is what it's busy creating the output folder so if we look at that there's uh, the result of course if we go look at our map reduce word count output folder there it is, it, the job ran successful, and here's the output, a 6.68 meg file that basically 
you know shows every word it found and account of it. So that's MapReduce. So that's a, a actual piece of code written by me executed inside this cluster. So uh, the next example now is we're going to do exactly that. Let me just clean all of that. We're going to we're going to uh, uh, what I just did. I'm we're going to run exactly that, uh, but this time we're going to um, submit it as a Uzi job. We're not going to sit on the console and and execute it. We're we're actually going to submit it as a job. As you can see, my clean all cleaned the whole folder over there. It's all clean. And um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tell my Uzi log. So I'm going to sit there, and that's the Uzi log over there. Slash. So I'm going to go into I created a little Uzi thing over here. Oops. Slash slash Uzi. Sorry, that's here's my Uzi. Um, so what we have here is again the dictionary file. Then I have a uh, a, a folder over here, and I'll go into that folder now. And here's the Uzi command that's going to execute. Then I have a properties file. So first of all, if we're going to look at the Uzi job, I'm going to run. What it's going to do, it's going to export just a variable, then it's going to deploy again, like normal, the dictionary file. Now the dictionary file would get there with another pro process like, um, uh, uh, um, you know, Flume or something would put the file over there um, in a different way. And then, um, so now, uh, um, uh, um, uh, w what we're going to do is, and to run Uzi, you have to deploy the Uzi job. So there, I'm going to deploy the Uzi job. So we can deploy all sorts of jobs, and they can sit on on the HDFS, on all the cl on all the machines in the cluster. And then I'm going to actually execute that Uzi job with us. So first of all, let's look at the deployment part of it. So um, here's a folder called MapRed uh, um, Uzi Job Test. Um, so the folder structure, oops, CD map red Uzi job test. So the folder structure really is there's an application folder and there's a workflow folder. So if you go into application, um, there's application.xml. This is used by IBM Big Insights. That's the only, you know, they have this application folder and you can put properties, you can do uh, icons and all sorts of stuff to, to make it work inside uh, IBM infrastructure so but for Uzi it really just needs this workflow folder and inside workflow folder there's a lib folder and there's a workflow.xml so if you go um, if you look in the lib folder you'll see that that jar file for the map reduce job I, I, I put it there so all jars and uh, uh, um, libraries and everything you need goes into lib and then um, if we look at the, uh, the workflow.xml file, really all it is, it, there's a very tight spec for this. So um, this job, and I'm going to call it RFC Java job, and I'm going to execute it, and I'm going to look for some variables. There's a variable, job tracker, and name node. There's two variables. Uh, my queue is default, and I'm going to execute same as previously, I'm going to execute this word count RFC with uh, two variables, RFC in and RFC out. Now, what's important about uh, uh, um, uh, um, Uzi here, and 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 I'll and I'll later show, and in the next video I'll show how to chain these together. Well, it can have a, a few end states. So, if everything's okay, if this job at the top, this Java job. Um, executed OK, then it goes to end and it ends. But if it had an error, it goes to fail and then it will print out some message for me w how it failed or what failed. So this is really a job schedule. You can say run this job. If it's OK, go on to that. But if it failed, do this or retry that or, you know, so it's so, so this it gets quite involved. I'll show it a little bit later. But uh, in the next video, but this really just says, hey, run this class, Java class, and that could also be any class. I mean, we could run really anything with this uh, um, and uh, and say, well, 
um, and it has two arguments. So um, if we look then at um, the actual running of a job, um, uh, um, so that's our workflow.xml. So here's our uh, here's our actual running then the uzi job.sh uzi job.sh again. So I'm going to say I'm going to deploy that folder we just looked at the the, the map uh, um, uzi test and inside there's the workflow.xml. All of that's going to go sit on the server, and then I'm going to actually say now execute uzi execute the job it's here's a configuration file I'm sending in a properties file I could have just put all of those detail on on the, on the command line here if I wanted to and then I'm just saying run so if we go look at this um, properties file um, the properties file oh, well let's be it so and there I'm setting a few variables you know there's my node there's my job tracker you know in, in big uh, environments I can say oh se select this node or use that job tracker that kind of stuff and then I'm sending in two wo uh, variables here word count in and where I'm gonna write the output to Uzi word count out um, uh, so here is also then um, the executable that tells Uzi where, where uh, you know it will be HDFS localhost 9000. Look for workflow in that folder, and that's the thing that I just that I deployed earlier. So, if I were to run this job, and if I go into our Uzi logs over here, I'm gonna now actually execute this Uzi job. So again, I'm gonna deploy the dictionary, <coughs> and I'm gonna uh, um, deploy the Uzi folder and I'm gonna start running the Uzi job so we'll see that Uzi gives me an output here a Uzi job number and inside Uzi's logs we'll see hey I picked up a new job um, and it uh, uh, um, seems to be a Java job there's a set jar and it's a job configuration it's busy running it so it's now actually executing my job we'll come back to that now so if we um, look at our folder over here um, our HDFS folder and again the Uzi job still running there in the background so if we look in our folder there's our actual uh, job a folder that has been uh, um, uh, deployed so the Uzi job uh, configuration is there's the workflow and the any application folder so of course you can have many of these jobs predefined and deployed before the time into the cluster I'm just doing it all in runtime here and then here's the output it's creating an output folder we can look through this and we can see that finally this line appears that says that job w uh, the job number that it gave me action produced an output okay so it has actually produced an output now let's go look at uh, Uzi work count out that's the output it produced we can go look at it we can see oh it's successful and it's created a 6.68 mic make file again if you were to look at this file you'll see that you know it's the same output so there's that exact same uh, uh, map reduce job this time uh, um, not run from a console but run from Uzi's uh, uh, job scheduler and Uzi took care of it um, of course I don't get the output here like the map reduce I actually um, got a job number and I had to wait for the job to complete so this way you can deploy your, uh, your Uzi jobs into our uh, into the HDFS and then just sit on the command line and execute those jobs almost like we do in Java today we deploy you know applications and then we execute them so this is the same thing we will deploy our libraries and our workflow.xml's and then we'll sit and fire them off from the outside of course Uzi job can be uh, scheduled to run every day or every hour or every month or 
or whatever we'll get to that here I just manually executed the Uzi job we'll get a little bit uh, further into that hopefully that helped um, thank you and um, we'll speak soon